So the root causes of N2O production. When we look at the basics of wastewater treatments, I think most of you know nitrification, denitrification. That is really the core of um, yeah, nit nitrogen removal. So you have two bacteria, the autotrophs and the heterotrophs, that are collaborating. It is the same in a conventional system or a biofilm system. The configurations are different, but they are collaborating. So the first group, the autotrophs, they actually oxidize your ammonia and they add some oxygen more and more until nitrates. This is nitrification. And in the end, then, if you feed this to heterotrophs, which actually eat carbon as a source, they are more compa comparable to humans. They eat organic carbon. The autotrophs don't really eat organic carbon. That's why there is nitrogen here. Yeah? So these people or these bacteria bring them back to nitrogen gas. And this is, of course, not um, a greenhouse gas, but in the process of it, you have a side step or you have an intermediate, which is called nitrous oxide. So this is a first take home. The heterotrophs have one pathway of N2O formation, which is in fact part of their core business. So if you want to denitrify, you always have to go over nitrous oxide. So it's not per se bad, it's only bad if these heterotrophs cannot consume this in order to turn it into N2 in a later stage, yeah? So then we go to the autotrophs, and unfortunately, they work not really in a straight line. So these bacteria have a side track here, and it depends on the local conditions, typically at very high dissolved oxygen, high ammonia, they can actually form N2O from this uh, intermediate, which is called hydroxylamine. Yeah, that's one pathway. And unfortunately, they also have a second one from nitrides. They can also form uh, nitrous oxide. And this happens under different conditions. This time, low DO, high ammonia. Okay, so that's kind of the summary of this mechanism. So if we summarize it in three lines, while autotrophs can produce N2O in two ways, the heterotrophs can actually produce N2O in one way, but important, very important is they can also consume N2O in one way. So the net balance might be even negative or neutral, okay? So that's the summary of them. And to make it easy, easily digestible for you, we will refer back to these blue ones, the autotrophs, uh, and we will refer to them as A1, A2, and we will also refer to the heterotrophic pathway as H, the brown symbol, okay? So if you see these symbols reappearing, these are the three pathways of N2O formation. So let's go to a case example. Uh, we will um, give the floor to Roberta Mbuyo, and she will be introducing um, a, a real case example. Roberta, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Bim. So, um... Here we are presenting a, a pilot scale uh, reactor, which is currently uh, used by the water utility Watergear in New Zealand um, to investigate uh, the N2O uh, emissions under different uh, operating conditions. They are doing some measurement uh, under different, uh, for example, influent conditions to uh, evaluate the N2O emission. Um, we are uh, collaborating with them uh, within a project, and the the goal uh, of the pro of the project is in fact to uh, enhance uh, piloting and on site uh, on site measurement campaign uh, to enhance process understanding about N two O and uh, biokinetic ASM in general, uh, and to obtain uh, an effective uh, mitigation uh, of greenhouse gases. So here we see it's a, um, a conventional uh, system uh, that Vim already mentioned earlier. So it's a, a denitrification zone followed by a nitrification zone. In the first part of the reactor, in the first part of the reactor, reactor is anoxic. So we see uh, an inlet. Um, influent, influent wastewater and secondary um, settler uh, recycle stream. Uh, this both enters the system and in this zone we have higher DOC, uh, uh, higher CD, higher ammonia, and then uh, denitrification occurs. Then the flow uh, passes through this, this window that you can see on the, uh, on the bottom and it goes to the aerated zone. In the aerated zone, the ammonia nitrification occurs and also the COD uh, oxidation. So basically in this zone, you have higher dissolved oxygen concentration, lower COD and lower uh, ammonia. 
so this is uh, what we would measure. So this in this slide, you can see the liquid N2O concentration and the uh, gas N2O concentration. This is a 3D CFD simulation, what we call a volume rendering. So a 3D visualization of, uh, in this case, a concentration of a certain variable N2O inside uh, the, the reactor. So on the on the left, we see the dissolved uh, liquid N2O concentration, and we can see that uh, higher concentration in the anoxic zone and lower concentration in the aerobic zone. Uh, in fact, uh, red means uh, yeah, it's a magnitude uh, of concentration. So red means high concentration and blue means lower concentration. And we can also see in the gas uh, that the higher concentration, the higher uh, gas concentration are in, uh, in the top part of the reactor and in the central zone where the plumes um, get out of the system. So this is exactly what we uh, would measure in, um, in, um, yeah, in measurement campaign, placing some sensors. Thanks, Roberta, for introducing this case. Uh, we will come back to this case later because this was not, was not really the root cause. But what we would like to touch upon is the three-step process. So what Roberta has shown is actually the result of this three-step process. So the first step is N2O, nitrous oxide, gets produced somewhere in your bioreactor. I already explained how. So there are three main pathways, either by these uh, bacteria or either via the two pathways of the autotrophs, okay? Just imagine they would not produce any N2O, we would not have an N2O issue. So that's really the root cause, is these three pathways. So what happens secondly is, even though N2O is a gas, it is actually starting in the dissolved form. So it gets transported through the water flow of your system, and that makes it hard to, yeah, of course, know the root cause because it, it's already going away from that. And you will measure it somewhere in the form of liquid N2O. And in a third step, and this is really causing the emissions, your N2O gets emitted because it gets stripped due to the aeration. So the liquid N2O joins the aeration bubbles, the air bubbles, and goes up. And this is really causing the emissions. So what we really measure is typically with liquid sensors or gas measurements, um, the N2O in the water phase or the gas phase. But yeah, really the root cause is here. And what, we, what is also important is what gets emitted is causing the climate impact. So we have to distinguish between what we can measure, what causes the climate impact, and what is the root cause of the problem. So if you approach this from an engineering point of view, we have actually two choices. So either we address the root cause, which, which means avoiding N2O to get produced or lowering the production of it or we, we treat the gas, and that's an end of pipe solution. For some reactors, it works because they are covered. And then you also avoid the environmental impact. But of course, in this webinar, we will be focusing on step number one, which is really the root cause. And we believe if you understand the root cause, you can really effectively mitigate. So Roberta, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Wim. So back to the to the pilot reactor here again, we see the dissolved uh, N2O concentration uh, in the liquid, in the anoxic and the uh, aerobic zone. What is, what is interesting to see is that the concentration is quite homogeneous in the reactor. So it's um, concentration, uh, higher concentration in the anoxic zone and slightly lower concentration in the aerobic zone. So actually uh, here we are uh, measure, measuring, actually if we put some uh, sensors, we are measuring the symptoms, uh, but we don't know where is exactly N2O originating from and why is it produced. So then if we go a step back, a step back in step one that we uh, mentioned, uh, what we would see is uh, what we would focus on are the root causes. So here we are looking at the uh, production rate, so the speed uh, of reaction of heterotroph uh, in, this, in this case, so how fast uh, heterotroph produce and to what the kilograms, cubic meters per day that uh, is produced in by heterotroph. And here we are looking at 2D uh, images. Uh, it's a, a side view uh, of, our, uh, of our system. Here what we are seeing is that uh, heterotroph produce uh, N2O in, of course, in the anoxic zone, which is uh, expected. Now, if we go to the heterotroph uh, pathways, A1 and A2, what we see is that A1 
uh, occurs in these transitions of between anoxic to aerobic, where you have uh, lower uh, oxygen, but also high ammonia availability, and kind of the same uh, for A2 uh, processes. Now, if we would uh, finally quantify uh, the root causes, uh, we would see that in this case, 57% uh, of the N2O is produced by the uh, heterotroph and the remaining fraction by the autotroph. So it's an interesting to note here that despite the two pathways uh, of autotroph, A1 and A2, occurs mainly in this transition zone, they account for uh, almost 50% of the N2O um, production. Now, uh, we can do uh, a simulation, a scenario uh, where, for example, we simulate what happens if our ammonia uh, load increases. It's very common uh, it's ammonia increase during the day uh, in the, our influent uh, wastewater. So basically what we see is that the um, heterotroph produce slightly uh, less um, N2O. But very interesting to note is that now the autotroph produce much more N2O than, than the the case before. So in the end, what if we again compare and quantify the root causes, we would see that actually uh, in this case, the uh, autotroph produce much more. Vim, if you go to the next, please. Yeah. Here, uh, if we would compare the two, um, the two uh, scenarios, we would see that uh, with high ammonia, the autotroph uh, pathways are much more important in the N2O production. And in particular, the A1 process uh, accounts for 63% uh, production. While in the low ammonia scenario, uh, most of the um, N2O was produced by the heterotroph. So as you can see, uh, a change in the influent composition or even a change in the operating condition we will see uh, later can drastically change the picture, can drastically change the way and to all gets produced. And um, going to step three, so really quantifying the emissions, uh, here we are looking at the uh, N2O gas emission rate. So how much N2O it gets stripped in the off gas. And again, we are comparing the uh, low ammonia scenario and the high ammonia scenario. So what we see is that basically by increasing the ammonia load, uh, the N2O emission uh, increase by a factor of 50 uh, 50 percent so as you can imagine it's uh, it's a, a huge uh, huge variation that can happen um, on a daily basis in a, in a wastewater treatment plant and this is exactly what uh, explicit also um, measured by their drones so explicit use these uh, drones to basically map uh, the uh, the gas um, and when it, it are able to uh, measure the N2O uh, emissions in uh, in the gas phase. So if you look at the um, plot here on the right, uh, you can see that basically within two hours, they could measure, they could observe uh, a very wide fluctuation of N2O emission between 50 and 100% uh, difference. And this can be caused, for example, by a change in the influent uh, organic concentration, influent ammonia concentration. So going back to the pilot reactor, here we see the summary uh, of the N2O uh, concentration in the gas and in the liquid in the two uh, scenarios, low ammonia scenario and high ammonia scenario. So this is what we would measure placing some sensor or hood in, uh, um, for measuring the off gas. So basically uh, what we would measure is an increase of N2O in both liquid and gas. Uh, in the case of higher uh, ammonia. Finally, we can yeah, quantify the, the final goal is to quantify, to really quantify the emission in terms of CO2 uh, equivalent. So here we are proposing two um, indicators uh, here on the, on the left, the yearly emission CO2 uh, equivalent uh, emission, and uh, on the right, the emission factor. So how much N2O gets emitted uh, per uh, ammonia influent load. Uh, so basically what we can see is that by um, 
increasing the ammonia uh, influent concentration, our yearly emissions are more than double. While on the other side, we can see that the emission factor is slightly reduced uh, because it's also linked uh, to the influent uh, ammonia, which increase. So basically, this is just an interesting point to mention that emission factor should always be uh, accompanied by uh, some other indicator, for example, the yearly emission in this case. Okay, so uh, thanks, Roberta. So we will go to full-scale plants if, uh, in the next section, but this uh, was like an introduction because it's a, it's a simple to understand system, just an anoxic zone and an aerobic zone. And Roberta has shown actually that we, our model uh, brings these three steps nicely together. So the first one is the production, we have, of course, the kinetics inside the model. So these kinetics tell us where it gets produced at which rate, so which mass per second or per hour of N2O. Then we have the production, of course, and then we have the finally the stripping with the gas, causing the final emissions. So if you paid close attention, uh, what you measure is, uh, is, is actually a consequence of the first step, but the gradients of the local hotspots of production are quite different when you compare to the gradients you would measure on site. And that makes it very hard to interpret uh, such systems or to know the root cause. So we, ha we have explained that the root cause can be found in three mechanisms, three production ways, pathways. And also if you change a bit of the conditions, not only the influent, but also the operational uh, conditions or a design, these pathways can react very, very differently. It all depends on the local conditions of dissolved oxygen, ammonia, and carbon. So on-site N2O measurements, either gas or liquids, they reveal the symptoms. But actually, we believe that in order to cure the patients, it really lies in addressing the root causes. 